Oh, I'm gonna let you know that I did this project on November 1st because I was so excited about making my house a home for the holidays. I got inspired to do this coffee table build that I saw that honestly, it said it was running for like $7,000. I was like, mm-mm, let's see what we can do with the wood that I have on my land because that accent ceiling we just did in the last episode really got me geared up for a build and I haven't built in a minute. The reclaimed lumber accent ceiling got me thinking what can I do with that wood if I took it up a notch and just spent some more time sanding it. I don't have a planer so that would make it a lot easier but this build will also show you what to do with minimal tools because I'm really just using a circular saw, a miter saw, and an orbital sander. I started removing the nails with a multi-tool because I wanted to keep the metal heads of the nails. They ended up falling out because duh, I should have just glued them into place to keep the metal there, but you know, it was just an extra effort I put in that ended up failing. I wanted to show you that though. After stepping back and looking at it when I was looking at the measurements of cutting it down, it was as wide as my couch. So I removed one piece of wood and made it skinnier, which is gonna seem awkward, but it'll make sense in a bit. This wood has been sitting out here for at least 30 years in the desert. So it is weathered to an extreme. That is why you see me taking my track saw and just running it along the side to take off just a little baby bit, enough to make it nice and straight. That way when we go to glue it up, the sides meet up nice and flush. The only edges that I am not ripping down are the ones that are on the exterior of the coffee table. So the ones that you're seeing, the only ones I am ripping down are the edges that I'm putting glue onto. Grabbed my most heaviest duty of clamps and right here before anybody says anything, yes, you could definitely use pocket hole screws to make sure that this is being held up super strong. You can use biscuit joints. You can do different types of joinery. I just opted to do glue. I just wanted to see how strong it would hold. So I doused it with glue and then it became the biggest mess and biggest frustration of my day. But I just sat there weathered through the storm and did this massive glue up. I mean, it's not massive, but it's massive for me. I haven't glued something this big in a while. Do not do this, do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. Once I got my life together a little bit, I did actually end up clamping it properly and I grabbed a couple pieces of wood as well and clamped those down straight across to make sure it didn't bow or to hopefully prevent bowing as it sat overnight to glue in its entirety. I am straight up still in pajamas. I just left this thing in such a hot mess yesterday. I'm curious if it's gonna hold. I was thinking about it last night and I don't know if this is gonna be strong enough. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is super skinny for a coffee table, fun fact, but I want it that way. Don't look up there, I can't see anything. I'm just kidding. I was gonna add that other plank, but oh, hi, happy boy after your breakfast. What's up, pup? I'm gonna see mom's building a table. Well, a coffee table slash turns bench. Okay, let me bring this outside. Oh my dear DIY gods, so much go through my head right now looking back at this video. There's so much I would have done differently, but your girl just wanted to prove a point. So instead of leaving it like this and just pouring epoxy like I originally wanted to, I was like, oh, let me sand all day. Let me show them taking it from a 40 grit to 320 grit. 2,000 years later. All right, I switched from my iPhone because now we're not sanding as much to my camera. Now this is what it looks like. It's smooth to the touch. It is uneven, but I'm not tripping on that. Hi, you like it? So I'm gonna go in, oh my gosh, I feel like a beauty guru, just with this like metal disc and just clean up the in-betweens. Oh, you guys, I wish I would have just left it, but I digress. Hi, Wiggle. Can we throw it? Oh, he's so happy. I decided to take that metal disc off or that wire brush off and use a different attachment to make the lines way more defined and softer to kind of match that sanding that we have going on along the edges. I wanted that to kind of run through the table as well. I want to tell you why the next two episodes are what they are and that is because when I am decorating my home, I'm only going to use Oh, the best of the best. And that is where Jenny Kane comes in. I really wanted to switch into the cooler weather and make my home nice and cozy because there really is no place like home for the holidays. And when it comes to curating a cozy and inviting home, Jenny Kane is the place to go. It can get overwhelming when you are designing your home, but that's what's really great about Jenny Kane. Everything is designed to fit into your home with ease. The Jenny Kane home collection is made up of enduring and timeless pieces that are always worth the investment and truly built to 
last forever. From dinnerware and serveware, furniture, candles and slippers, to pillows and throws, there is literally something for every room, style, and sensibility. The one thing that is truly inspiring this mini makeover is the Aspen Boucle Throw in Taupe. I mean, I just can't get enough of it. The natural textures and the inviting neutrals, Jenny Kane just creates this California-inspired classic for any room or mood, and I'm excited to see how it progresses in episode two. If you guys are looking to add one of Jenny Kane's lovely pieces into your home, I highly suggest using my code METS at checkout to get 15% off your first order. That's 15% off your first order when you visit J-E-N-N-I K-A-Y-N-E dot com. Promo code METS. To even get to the point to have the boucle throw just have an area that is worthy of laying down in, we need to get back to this build. After sanding everything down and doing the accents, getting that good to go, that is when I went in and finally cut the edges to be flush and my bench coffee table situation is seven feet long. I do not typically do joint work at all. So for me to dive into dovetails, I wanted to take it at a very easy pace and just focus on cutting out the actual shape of the joint and not the angle on the sides. And that will make sense when you visit the Patreon post about this, which is free. And it goes into detail about the dovetail angle that I am talking about. So this isn't a traditional dovetail joint. I measured and marked what I just thought would look the best and also hold pretty beefy. And I just marked the smaller side of the dovetail to be two inches and then the longer side is just two and a half, two and three quarter. Connected all my measurements with a straight edge and then used a Sharpie to color it in so my brain did not forget, hey, you need to chisel this out. It was kind of difficult to be chiseling something out level on a raw piece of wood. Like I didn't cut this down yet and I wanted that to be the look of it. So that's why I'm going about it this way. Also, I just wanna note that what we are chiseling out is the thickness of the wood that is going to be inserting into it for the coffee table to create this joint. Well, this very beginner, very basic, very oh hey, I never have done this before joint. Okay, so inside is rough, outside is smooth. Now we need to cut accordingly onto this piece, but upside down. I didn't film this for whatever reason, but I flipped it upside down and traced out the leg and it's like raw exterior form. Went in with my jigsaw and started cutting it out so it could insert into this. I don't know about you, but a lot of the times I'm doing something, it's for the first time. So when I flipped the leg and inserted it into the top of the table and it actually fit fairly good, even though there was gaps and it wasn't perfect, I was very impressed with myself. I repeated that same exact process to the other leg and then we were finally able to look at what we have done. Like, what the heck? I'll do the same kind of like cut around the raw piece of wood situation with a little bit of like a half lap joint and put a really cool piece of wood right here or you could put supports that go on each leg like from the center to the leg and brace it. But again, because the coffee table, I'm not opting to do that. I cannot believe I just literally built this. I mean, I know this is not as amazing as the Restoration Harbor one, but it's custom to my space and I built it. So, and I didn't spend any money. Literally zero dollars I've spent. Gosh, what? Oh, this? The coffee table? Oh my God, I'm so excited. All my friends and I, we do not eat at tables. Like we never really sit and eat at a dining table. This is literally perfect. It fits three people. One, two, three. And I only have two friends over at a time. Yeah, right? It's good. 
back to the scene of the crime of the glue. Everyone tells me how strong wood glue is, and apparently I wanted to put it to the test with this beefy build. So I just doused that joint with glue, pressed it on in, and the weight of it alone with a couple of kettlebells from my gym are sinking it into place that you can't see. But this is where, no, I wish I stopped. I decided to add wood filler and the minute I did it, I sat there being like, you never like how the wood filler looks. And fun fact, I didn't. And it didn't take until like brushing it away, chiseling it a little bit, sanding it and stepping back and just looking at it and being like, dang it. I really don't like this, but um, we will fix it in the next episode. I have a couple of solutions hopefully for it, but I wish I didn't fill this with wood filler. Now opening up my home to you is a little nerve wracking to me because it is my safe space and I haven't shared what the inside of my like living situation looks like to this house because this is such a safe space to me. People have a tendency to tell you how to live or how it should look like where you live and I've never had a place to just settle. So I've been keeping this safe to me until I felt confident enough to share with you guys my mini refresh because again, keep in mind, I'm not touching this house until 2022. Okay. And before, oh my God, the comments, rip the carpet out. Why don't you rip that carpet? Oh wow. This is literally exactly what I wanted. <gasps> Did you just bite that? I'm sorry. I don't have dogs that eat my bills. Fun fact, I love it. I know it's uneven. I know it's kind of wonky towards this side. It doesn't really bother me though. It does it bother me? I think it bothers me. But you know, I'm totally just hyping myself up. Uh oh. Rachel, I was saying previously, we are gonna be redecorating my entire living room. Oh, we need a new rug. We need pillows and the big old Christmas tree here. So the Christmas tree will come out to here. I need to get rid of this rug. Need to redecorate. Oh, was that a little bit of a tease? I didn't really show you it up close, and that is because I have no space to do it justice, so you'll have to turn into episode two for the living room makeover. If you guys paid attention in the screenshot when I sat down, you saw the bench in its entirety, but there is no space for it in its reveal. So I will see you soon for another DIY.